Hey everybody, welcome back to NetTouch. Today we are going to be taking another look at the jQuery templating plugin. So if you didn't hear just today, maybe yesterday, uh, the jQuery team announced that the three plugins that Microsoft initially uh, submitted to jQuery, they're now being officially supported. So what that means is it's maintained and updated uh, specifically by the jQuery core team. So we're gonna be revisiting the templating plugin that we covered maybe a month or two ago on NetTouch. Okay, so the first step we want to do here is if you want to visit blog.jquery.com, they have a, a little write-up on, on the whole deal. But we now have the API so we can go through the documentation. So if you want to use it, the first step is to download the templating uh, plugin. So you can go right here, github.com slash jquery slash jquery dash template or TMPL. And this is the file we need right here. So go ahead and download that however you like, whether it's that or with the terminal. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to, um, we covered a little bit of Twitter in this uh, this Justin Bieber tweets. By the way, if you thought I was serious about that, you're insane. It was a joke. And you wouldn't believe some of the emails I got. Okay, so this is kind of what we're building. But what's cool about this is that we're using a, a template. So it's so much easier to format the HTML that we're receiving from, or that we're building from the Ajax call to the Twitter search API. So that's what we'll build today. So I'm going to go into my editor, and you can see here that I just have a style sheet. Don't worry about that at all. I'm importing jQuery 1.4.2, and we also are importing jQuery.template. So here's where we get started. The very first thing we need to do is let's go ahead and just grab the, the data from the Twitter search API. So within script tags, what we can do here is just we'll just do a very quick Ajax call, quick and dirty. And what we'll do here is uh, what type? It's going to be a get request. And next, uh, the data type. We'll just do JSONP. And then next, the URL we need to do it. We'll just hard code this in. Uh, we're going to search for search.twitter.com slash search.json. And the query that we're looking for is just NetTuts. And then finally, once we get that and we get a success, we'll have that returned, and I'm going to be tweet. So if you want to console.log tweets and see what we get, let's go ahead and do that. Refresh the page, unterminated string, sorry about that. Okay, and we get an object, and if you watch that Justin Bieber tutorial, this should be very familiar to you. So all we want to do right now is filter through results and get some data. What I want here is I want the username, I want the tweet itself, and I want the user's avatar image. And that's all we want. So we need to put this into an object. So what I can do right now is we'll start by saying var Twitter. Let's create an array. And then we're going to create objects. So this array will be an array of objects. So then we'll do a jQuery.each statement. And what I want to do here is filter through these. So I need to go to uh, the tweets dot Let's go to the top, tweets.results, and then for each one of these right here. So for each tweets.results, then run a function. And the function will accept the index, the current index, and the object itself. And the OBJ will be equal to each one of these. So it'll have all of those properties and functions available. Okay, so what we're going to do in here is build up uh, an object. So I can say twitter.push. And Twitter.push is just a way to add an item to uh, to an array. So Twitter.push. And this time, though, instead of putting a value, I'm going to add an object. So uh, we'll do username. And we can give these any names we want. But this is going to point to the object dot from user. Okay. And we're just going to do this for everything we want. So if you want to take this and expand upon it and add more, feel free. Uh, so we'll get the tweet. And that's obj.txt. Next, we want the image source, source, and that's going to be profile image URL, right there. So we'll say uh, img source obj.profile image URL, and um, that's fine for now. We don't want to do too much here. Okay, so then at the bottom, what we can do here is say jQuery.tweets and see what we need to do here 
is we need to build up a template. So you know if you've ever uh, done Ajax calls before, you end up having to do like really sloppy where you embed all this HTML, or you might go ul.pinned and then and then list item and then anchor tag and then you add all of that really sloppy right what we can do here with the templating plugin is create a specific template so let's do it right here and we need to give it a couple attributes first an ID just a name we'll call it tweets or something like that and then type so I've seen people do text slash HTML and I've also seen people do text slash X dash jQuery dash template so I think that's the standard one right now so we'll use that Okay, so within here, this is where we create our template. So I know that I want list items. So we'll use list items here. And within each one, uh, first thing, let's get the image source. So we know that we want the, uh, the image source to be a path to that avatar. So we can reference a, a property by doing uh, this dollar sign and then within curly braces, the property name, like so. And then I also want to give it an alt and that'll be um, username something like that. Next we need the username so we'll put that in a heading and that'll be username. And Then finally we'll do the tweet. So what's important to note here is that each of these template names correspond to what we have here. So username tweet image source, username tweet image source. So now what we want to do here is use this template for this data. We're going to render this data. So what we'll do here is go back to our bottom, and also we have our template, before I get ahead of myself, we have our template, but we need to know where actually should this template uh, be placed. So I'm going to put it right down here, and I'll say UL ID and give it a name of Twitter or something like that. That's where this template is going to be filtered through and inserted. So now I can simply do something like jQuery tweets dot template and what's the name of the template? We called it Twitter right here. And we're going to append it to Twitter. All right, let's go over this really quickly. So what is this? jQuery tweets. So first, this is where we track down our template. Script ID is tweets. So that's what we're grabbing. And we're saying, okay, use that template, but attach what data to it? Twitter. And this is an array of objects. So if you want when we go back, let's go ahead and console.log Twitter, just so you can see what it is. But just know it's an array full of uh, multiple objects containing this information. And then we have that template and we have the data. Where are we going to put it? We're going to append it to this unordered list with an ID of Twitter. So let's save that and go back into Firefox. If I refresh, you can see here now that we console logged Twitter. You can see it's an array just full of objects, lots of objects, and each object contains those values that we set. And now it's as easy as this. So I have done a little bit of CSS, nothing interesting, but this is what it would look like by default. Close that up. So what's really nice about this is you never have to insert a bunch of muddy HTML into your JavaScript. This is far easier to read. So you just set it up here. If you hover over the image, you can see the alt tag, or let's this you can see everything's been set up nicely for each list item we have our image the h2 and the paragraph so we can do even more with this you can do quite a bit um, what about properties that may or may not exist so for instance one thing is let's go back to the top and let's console.log tweets and while we're here I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this other one There are going to be things returned that maybe not all of them will have. For instance, if we go into results, you see this, uh, maybe geo. Uh, you can set Twitter up so it'll track where you are when you made the tweet, but not everyone's going to have it, so you can see null. So you need to check for this. So maybe within your template you have something like, oh, I don't even know really what to put it in. Let's just put it in a span for now. And we want something like uh, geo. Okay, so we could do this, but what happens if it's null? So let's go ahead and set that up really quickly. So we have geo, and that's obj.geo. See? Dot geo. So if I refresh and now I click on one of these, you can see it just renders an empty span, and we don't want that because if there's nothing there, you don't want empty markup. So what you can do is use these if statements. So if I go back, they have the documentation here somewhere. Yeah, you see you have each one. 
Uh, you have else, so these little shorthand ones. So it's curly brace, curly brace, if, close curly brace, close curly brace, and you also have else, stuff like that. So let's take a look at this one. And you see the basic format is opening if and then property name, and then you do the end if like so. So let's take a look at that, and if we go back, now I can say right up here, if geo, in that case, then do the span tag, and then I'm going to do like that. So that span will only render if one's been there. And now you can see it's not going to show. And you know what? Not many people use the geo, so I don't think we're going to see it anywhere. Yeah, it's not showing up, but that's good because when people do, it will show up. So for example, if I negate that, which will bring back the empty span. As you can see right there. Okay, so there's a lot of coolness you can check out. Be sure to research the api.jquery.com slash category slash plugin slash templates. Okay, so final wrap up, you need to import jQuery, then import the jQuery templating plugin. Then you create your template and make sure you put it with a script, give it an ID, and make sure you set the type to uh, text slash x jQuery template. Make sure you put all of your uh, your template names within this kind of dollar, and then the name surrounded by curly braces. Finally, or not finally, but next you set up where this template will be inserted ultimately, okay? And then finally, you just build up your object or an array of objects and you attach it by doing jQuery tweets. So we get this script, get this template, and then apply the data to it. What data? This Twitter array which contains a bunch of objects. And then finally, once those have been combined, append it to where? This unordered list right here. And that's all you have to do. So now you don't have to insert all of that muddy markup into your JavaScript. All right, let me know what you think. And for more tips and tutorials, be sure to visit net.touchsplus.com. Bye.